Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in this session, we're actually going to start to get our hands dirty and get into actually creating an urban energy model uh, from a, a uh, Rhino file that just has a series of, of individual footprints, individual building footprints for a new development. Um, so to start off with, you guys can access this sample file. The link will be in the description, but uh, in case uh, you're ever unable to find it in the future, you should always be able to find the link to this uh, the sample file under our, our GitHub repo of LBT Grasshopper samples. Uh, and if you go under samples and then under Dragonfly, uh, you will find a link to this file, this 3DM file, this from buildingfootprints.3dm. Uh, so that's what we're going to be working from today. And you'll see it's not a very complex model that we're going to be building right now, just to, to demonstrate uh, the capabilities of, of creating models from building footprints. It's really we just have a series of 14 or so or 13 uh, individual footprint geometries here represented as BREPs. Uh, you guys will see actually if you look at the names of these geometries, we actually already have names that we're going to use to assign them. Uh, in our in our dragonfly model in order to assemble them and actually assign properties to the dragonfly models So we have a name for the footprint or the building and we have the number of stories that are associated with that building So first things first, we're going to bring this geometry into grasshopper. So Now that I've got the rhino file open. I'm just going to launch grasshopper uh, Give it a second to load up uh, and as many of you are already aware, our, our Ladybug Tools plugins have all sorts of nice icons here. Pretty much everything that we're going to be working with is under the Dragonfly tab. You guys may see it uh, you know, as displayed as text, as a DF, or as spelled out as Dragonfly. I'm going to leave mine as icons so that you guys can, uh, uh, you know, can at least follow along a little more easily with that. And, uh, and importantly, the critical thing I need to do is the component that I'm going to be using to basically turn these geometries that I have in Rhino into fully simulatable Dragonfly objects is under this zero create tab. So if you guys bring this DF from building footprint, this Dragonfly from building footprint component, you'll see this will give us a sense of what we actually need in order to take geometry and make it simulatable. Um, so, all right, and I'm going to use a little uh, utility here so that you guys can follow along easily by seeing both the icon of the component I drop on the canvas and the name of the component that I'm looking at. Uh, okay, but that's you obviously don't need that, that plugin yourself. This is just to help you guys follow along. So, all right, so in order to create these Dragonfly buildings, uh, first and foremost, you'll see that we need footprint geometry. And the reason why I know I need that, again, is because of our naming convention. If it's got a single underscore in front of it, uh, that means it's required. You guys can also click on the little uh, the little orange balloon that's associated with these components, and you'll always be able to see uh, exactly what's, you know, you get messages about what you're missing. All right, so first and foremost, we need the footprint geometry. So... To bring in the footprint geometry here, I'm going to use just the geometry pipeline, the native grasshopper geometry uh, pipeline. Here we go, geometry pipeline. Uh, and you'll see what this will allow me to do is that you can bring in all of the objects of a certain type from a layer. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to bring in, let's see, we'll see all of the geometries that we're interested in here are on the footprints layer uh, here. So as long as uh, I just type, let's see, I'll move this over to this side. If I right click on the component here, the geometry pipeline, and I'll set a layer filter of F O T P R I N T S footprints, uh, and I'll select that. And then I need to make sure that I'm bringing all the B rep geometries because these are these are B reps that I'm bringing in here. So I'm going to just uh, let's see, I'll right click again and make sure that uh, B reps is checked here. And then we should see if I pull up a panel. You guys will find that we have a bunch of reference B reps now for uh, for these footprints. So all right, so I can go and take these B reps now that are coming from the Rhino scene, and I can plug them directly into this Dragonfly fun building footprint component, and that will give us our footprint geometry here. Uh, but the other critical things that I need in order to run this component, so all right, so I need to supply a floor to floor uh, height for these for this model. And I need to set run, so there's a, a run input here, which if you guys are very familiar with uh, the convention in Ladybug Tools, that's a Boolean toggle, we just need to set true. Uh, so to make things really simple right now, I'm just going to set the same floor to floor height for all the buildings. Let's see, I'm going to set them all equal to 3.5 meters. All right, and again, that's the distance from the floor of, of, uh, of one story to the floor of the next story. 
So that's a pretty reasonable, I think, assumption for a lot of buildings. Uh, it can certainly vary from building to building. Um, and then I'm going to set this run to true. So all right, let's go and set the the um, the this boolean toggle here. We'll pull up, double click uh, on the canvas, bring up a boolean toggle, and connect that to run. And then you'll see the component will no longer be orange because there's uh, there's all the required inputs are supplied. But we still aren't going to be getting anything out of this component, right? It's still going to be a null until I double click this toggle to true. And then you'll see we're going to get some building objects, some dragonfly building objects out of this component. So again, these are, these are things that basically contain everything that's needed to simulate the model. Um, right now, I, I, you'd probably bet because we only just plugged in the, the footprints and uh, single floor to floor that this is not the most interesting uh, type of geometry. So in order to take a look at what I've actually got here, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to pull up one of our Dragonfly Visualize components. Maybe I'll just grab this DF Visualize All, which will give me a representation of what these geometries look like in the Rhino scene. And if I connect up the DF objects to this, you'll see, you know, we get, instead of just the footprints, we're getting a single, you know, set of footprints that are all the same, uh, the same height here, just a single story at 3.5 uh, uh, meters tall. And so if you hover over the floor to floor description here, it will tell you exactly, you know, what are the different things that you can put in here. So it can be a single value for a single story, or you can plug in a list of numbers, uh, you know, and that will allow you to generate multiple stories per floor. So let's say if I want to plug in, uh, let's say, I, I want to maybe create a first story that's at, uh, maybe we'll just create, Let's make this simple. Three stories at 3.5 uh, uh, meter height. So I can right click this and uh, change the panel to have multi-line data. So this way I can actually output a list of values from this component instead of just a single 3.5. I'm going to double click this and then I'll type a 3.5 and then another 3.5. And then when I hit OK, you'll see that now I'm actually getting Dragonfly buildings. All of them have three stories, each at 3.5. You know, if I want to make that first story a little taller, I can change that to, uh, you know, a five or something like that. That'll increase the height of the first story that you see here uh, of all the buildings. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to put this back down to 3.5. In fact, maybe I'm just going to make it all one story again, because ideally what we would like to do, we know that we have, if we click on these, these rhino geometries and I go over to these, these properties of them, you'll see that the names of each of these geometry objects that I'm getting from the Rhino scene actually already tell me how many stories I want for each of these buildings. Uh, and you can see that it's all different. For example, this building should be three stories. This one should be six. This one should also be three. This one should be eight. So ideally, I'd like to get these names from the Rhino uh, model. And then I'm going to use those to generate a list of floor to floor heights. So all right, so let's see. What's the easiest way to do this first? So First off, I'm going to use a native grasshopper component uh, that is under, here we go, under input, I can get object details. So if you guys gra drag and drop this component onto the, onto the canvas, this native grasshopper object details, and I can connect up my BREP objects that I'm bringing in from the Rhino scene, and it's going to tell me a bunch of things about their properties. You know, it'll tell me that they're reference objects, they're reference from the Rhino scene. It'll tell me if they're available, some of these other things. Oh, very importantly now, we actually get the name of the objects. So, all right, so this is what I'm going to, I'll pull up a panel so you guys can see actually. But the beautiful thing about this is that now we have a list of names uh, and, you know, the stories associated with that that's aligned with our list of BREP geometries that are used to, being used to create our, uh, our Dragonfly uh, uh, buildings. So, so all that I really care about here are, is just the name of the building really at the front here, whether that's Residential 6, Residential Mall, and what's at the very, very end, which are those number of stories. So the easy way that I'm going to kind of turn this name into a set of parameters that I can plug into the Dragonfly component is bring up a native grasshopper uh, text replace component so first things first i just want to get rid of like the what, what's basically being used to denote the stories here this dash and number of stories so i'm going to connect up the names to the text input here and then for the the part to find 
I essentially just want to replace a, the, you know, what this common separator is for all of the, all of the various um, uh, names here. So that's just going to be a, I'm going to double click then put a double quote so that my input goes in the panel. And have space dash space stories and then colon with another space. And after I go and I put this and I connect up a panel that has this to the text fragment, then I just want to replace this with something that I can easily use to split things with. Uh, so maybe I'll just replace this with a single dash at first uh, so that out of this component I get a much cleaner version that's a little bit easier to work with. Um, and in fact, maybe it looks like I, I, could, I could even replace a whole, yeah, I need an extra space at the end of this. And that way I'm actually like, I'm only getting the name and then the number of stories separated by this little uh, dash value. So the reason why I did this is so that now I can use a component like uh, text split. Here we go, which is again, another native grasshopper component, uh, which I found by just double clicking and typing text split. I'll connect up the text to that. And now I can use the same character that I used to replace this. I can plug this in here, and now I'm getting a nice, neat list, just like what I what I kind of wanted here. Here, let me make the grasshopper screen a little bigger so we can see what's going on. So you'll see, right, we're getting the name that we want to assign to the building, and we're getting that number of stories at the end here. So all right, so the easy way now that I can grab this integer for the number of stories, I'm going to use a native grasshopper list item. Okay. We'll grab that list item, and then I'm going to connect up this list of values here, right? Which is really because we have a, a double dash line here is a grasshopper data tree, so it's like a list of lists. And really, I just want for each of these kind of sublists, I want the second item, that this index number one. So for the i input of list item, I'm going to plug in a one, and we'll connect that up to the list item here. All right. So now I have a nice neat list of just my number, the number of stories that I want to assign here. So I could go ahead and instead of plugging in my 3.5 here for my floor to floor height, I could just go and plug in my list. The problem that we find here is that just in the same way that we plugged in a list of 3.5 values before, now essentially the component is going to interpret this as I want the first story at 10 meters, the next story at three meters, and you know, and so you can see that's why our, our rhino grasshopper scene doesn't look too uh too cohesive right now, right? It's basically making a bunch of stories uh for each individual building at these heights rather than what we really want, uh, which is that each and every uh, footprint should get its own uh own individual uh uh set of stories. So to make this easier, I'm going to first turn off, I'm, instead of flattening the input to this component, uh, I'm going to turn that off so that I can try to align the, the footprint geometries here with the individual branches of the tree that I have here. So in order to do this, I will right click on the floor to floor and unflatten this, basically say that it's no longer flattened. And already we're getting a little closer to what we'd expect, but I also would need to uh, take this footprint geometry and also turn the flatten off of that. Now we're starting to get a little closer. So you see how uh, when we look at our B reps here, it's not a list of lists yet, but our, our floor to floor values are a list of lists. So in, in basically what we want to do is, is kind of turn, make sure that our footprint geometry, our B rep footprint geometry uh, is aligned in the exact same way that, that this floor to floor is, is aligned here. So in order to do that, we will, I'm going to grab, double click on the canvas and bring up a native grasshopper geometry parameter component. Just bring that up on the canvas. And you'll see I can connect up our BREP geometry to this. And right now it's all just in a single list, right? It's just a single list of values. But if I were to right click on this geometry parameter and then graph the inputs, now we're getting something, right? This looks a lot more like what we get coming out of the list item component here, right? Where we have uh, a, a separate value for each and every building footprint. So, all right. So this is the BREP geometry that I'm going to plug in to the footprint geometry. And now, all right, now at least we're seeing something that makes a little more sense, right? We got one building uh, that has like, you know, a, well, at this point it's a still a single story, but it's a one meter height. Whereas this is, uh, you know, 
I guess a 10 meter height, or you know, we're at least getting the building footprints having their values set based on the uh, the the kind of the value that we have here. So I guess ideally, what we need to do though, if we really want to say like you know, get this component to actually specify a number of stories uh, that go correspond with this footprint geometry, what we really need to do is take this. Uh, you know, maybe let's say this 3.5 value that we that we have here, right? It's the, this value that says each floor, each story is only 3.5 tall, and we need to duplicate that the same number of times that we see uh, in uh, in this list here. So thankfully, there's actually a native grasshopper component we can use for this, uh, and that's a component that's simply just called duplicate. Okay. And uh, this, if I connect up a 3.5 here to this component, and then I connect up for the n or the number of times that I want to duplicate this value up to this, up, up from our list item component, we'll see when we look at the output here that we actually get what we're looking for. So I get a, you know, the first value is 3.5 duplicated 10 times. The next value is 3.5 duplicated three times, you know. So now we're actually pulling the number of stories from the name and generating a list of values uh, that can that is aligned to our input geometry. So I believe if I simply take these these values and plug them up to the floor to floor here, there we go. So this is exactly what we are looking for now, right? So we have you know uh, everything still at at a you know floor to floor height of 3.5 as we specified here, 3.5 meters. But we have some buildings that are one story, some buildings that are three story. Uh, some buildings that are three story and some buildings that are 10 stories even like this one. So, all right. So now we actually have dragonfly building objects that are, that are close to, uh, close to what we like. Before I, I start to move to wrap up the video here, I just want to clean things up a little bit. And, and I guess there's one other thing that I'd like to do. So we still have, uh, out of our text split component here, I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Uh, so I can I can see a little better here. So out of our text split component, right, we still are actually getting the first value is the name that we want to assign to the dragonfly objects. And so you can see that uh, you know the dragonfly from building footprint component will take a name as input. Um, so ideally, we just like to pull this value and assign it to this component here. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to take just the same way that I hear that I took a list item component. I'm going to copy and paste this list item. Uh, and instead of pulling the second value as I did here, uh, which has an index, whoops, sorry, which has an index of one, right? We said that. I'm going to pull the first value, which has an index of zero. So I'm just going to double click here, type zero. And now we will get just the names of, of the, the buildings that we want. And so now if I can connect these to the names of, well, we'll see right now, right? These are just randomly generated building names, right? Building 401, et cetera. Now when I connect up these names to the name input of the Dragonfly from building footprints component, uh, here we go, right? It'll tell me, okay, this one's building residential six. And this one's mall one. This one's residential three, you know? All right. So now I can at least easily identify what each of these Dragonfly buildings are uh, in my definition here. All right, so we did a lot to try and bring this geometry in, in from Grasshopper. I think there's actually a lot that we can simplify because most certainly we don't need this, you know, now that we've kind of uh, set everything up to give us buildings, it'd be really nice if we could just self-contain everything within this Grasshopper file. So I'm gonna start doing that right now before we before we wrap up this video. First thing that I'm gonna do is instead of taking the geometry directly from Rhino Grasshopper, I just want to internalize that geometry inside this component, right? So it'll live in the Grasshopper definition. It'll be separate from that Rhino file. So I'm going to right click on this component and select internalize data. All right, and you'll see that now this will become disconnected from the whole geometry pipeline. And now this part of my Grasshopper definition no longer needs to have the Rhino file in order to be able to work. Uh, so it would be nice now if I could do the same thing but for these building names and for um, these, these building stories here. So in order to do this, I can also just internalize each one of these, these values here, the, the values that are coming out of this list item component. 
I can easily internalize those in uh, native grasshopper data parameter, just in the same way that I have the, this stored in the native grasshopper geometry parameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the canvas and bring up a native grasshopper, uh, what do we call this, data parameter. And now if I connect, you know, my uh, floor number of stories to this component, and I'll see, right, it's, I'm still getting the same thing out of this and the panel. But now if I right-click on the canvas and select internalize data, now I can just go and I can plug this directly into my duplicate uh, component. And now we have another part of our Grasshopper canvas that no longer uh, needs the Rhino definition here in order to work. So, all right, I'm moving this to the side right now. So, all right, we're almost there. I'm just trying to basically make a clean Grasshopper definition before we go off to the next phase. So the last thing that we need to do, so I have these names, right? These names are still dependent upon the objects I'm pulling from Rhino. So I've, I'm going to do the same thing with these names that I did here with the, with the data component. So I'm going to copy and paste my data parameter. And I will connect up, oops, I'm just going to connect up the names of the buildings to this component, right? It'll still uh, look the same coming out of this component as it looks going in. So now if I right click on this and select internalize data, now I have something that I can connect up for the name of my Dragonfly buildings. And finally, <laughs> I think we can say, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Maybe we don't need that panel anymore. Um, I'm just going to organize these inputs over here. Right, so now I can just take all of this stuff that, that is, has a dependency, basically it depends on the, on the Rhino file that I'm previewing, and I can easily just delete it and get rid of it. And I now have a grasshopper definition that contains both the geometry, right, the footprint geometry that I'm interested in. Those are aligned with lists of stories of floor to floor heights um, that are being assigned to those footprint geometries to create dragonfly buildings. And then lastly, I'm assigning some names to these, to these buildings uh, in order to be able to, so that I can easily identify them after I create them here, after I create these building objects that essentially have all the properties assigned to them for an energy simulation, uh, right? This way I can still identify them. And then I'm using just Dragonfly Visualize All to see everything within the, within the Rhino Grasshopper scene and check that everything looks okay. So I know this was a little bit of a longer video and we definitely went down some rabbit holes with data trees, especially in the management of this. Um, which I realize is a very advanced concept for a lot of uh, users, but when you're working with large urban models like this, data trees and managing, uh, you know, the grafting of lists and managing lists of lists, it becomes extremely, extremely helpful uh, for for uh, managing the ma large amount of data that you'll have in these urban models. So again, I could have simply also, if I knew all the buildings were at the same height, I could have just plugged in the footprint geometry in a single floor to floor value. Uh, but at least this way you guys see that, that you actually have ways of really customizing and assigning different number of floors, different names to each Dragonfly building. So in the next uh, uh, set of videos, we're going to dive more deeply into the energy properties that are assigned to these to this, uh, these objects. Uh, maybe edit a few more of the, the geometry parameters, explore some of these other options on the Dragonfly from building footprint inputs that we have here. Uh, and really make sure that we understand what we're what we've created before we go and send that off to something like an energy simulation. So uh, thank you for sticking through this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.